What's good everyone, my name is Aaron and today I'm gonna to give you four tips on how to make the most out of your Lightroom presets. Now I'm sure that I cannot be the only one who's experienced this where you spend $25 on someone's new preset pack, you open up your Lightroom, you start pasting them all over your photos and the first thing you'll see is that it looks horrible, completely blown out, colors are way off the charts. And like, that's not what it looks like in their photos. What am I doing wrong? I don't know what to do. So today I'm gonna to give you these four tips that you should probably try out first before you throw your computer out the window. All right, tip number one is gonna be your white balance. And this is arguably the most important of all these tips. White balance is such an underrated factor. Sure, you can use it to warm up your photos or cool down your photos, but if your white balance is off, it means that you're gonna get weird color fringing, the colors that you do have are not gonna look the way they're supposed to, and nine out of 10 times, this is the culprit that's gonna make your Lightroom presets look like crap. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I've got this image right here of my friend Daniel back in Toronto, you got the CN Tower in the background. It's a little underexposed, but it's all good. Now, let's say we try and run this one preset of mine on here called High Noon. What you're gonna see is that his skin just looks pale and pink and weird. It just doesn't look good at all. So how can we fix this? Now, this preset was made to look very cool and give those blue tones a kick, but the skin tones suffer as a result. But if you warm this shot up just like a little bit, just that one minor tweak in white balance brought out the life in his skin. Uh, it almost looks summery. Um, it still has that cool edgy vibe, but at least his skin tone is on point right now. And that's just by tweaking the white balance. Tip number two is gonna be exposure. Now, you may think to yourself, that, that's so obvious, like why wouldn't you change your exposure? But sometimes you get these presets and once you run them on your specific photos, they get blown out or they get so dark you don't know what to do with them and you're eager to dive into all the adjustments and start tweaking the highlights and the shadows and bring your blacks down or up and go crazy with it. But usually, just a small tweak in the basic exposure can already bring your exposure up to where it's supposed to be and then you can move into those individual sliders to manipulate the image itself. So I've got this image right here of uh, this athlete. I shot this back in Rotterdam and as you can already tell, the shot is slightly underexposed. So if I run this preset on here, let's go with Halcyon. Uh, it looks, looks pretty cool, pretty edgy, but it's a way too kind of interesting, way too dramatic for me. Now what I could do is bring up the blacks right here, but if I do that, you're gonna start to mess with these darker blacks in his shirt right here. And I'm not too big a fan of the look where the blacks turn into like straight up gray. I like my faded looks, but this is too much. So instead of messing with the blacks, what we're gonna do here is just barely bring up the overall exposure. Now what that does is the entire image has become a lot lighter, but we still have those deep blacks in his shirt, in his backpack. Uh, the shadow on his face is still pretty dark, which I do like a lot more. Tip number three is adjusting your camera profile. Now, a few months ago, Lightroom put out this update where they implemented these new Adobe standard color profiles. And essentially what these profiles do is they change the way the algorithm interprets the raw data from your camera. So when you implement a raw data file into the software, in this case Lightroom, the algorithm determines the image that you're gonna get out of that, which is the image that you're gonna work with. Now by changing the profile, according to whatever kind of photo you're working with, it's gonna change the way your image is gonna look. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we stick with this image right here that my friend Floyd took back at Moraine Lake, we're gonna apply a preset, let's go with Halcyon. Right now it's set to Adobe Color, which is our standard interpretation. That looks pretty good, but right now I'm kind of bothered by the orangey tones in my face right here. I don't know, personally, I like a suntan, but they, this just looks unnatural. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the camera profiles. You're gonna find those at the top of your basic adjustments. And let's run through these. So if you set to Adobe Landscape, or you can see it just becomes much more punchy, much more vibrant. That's not a good look in my opinion. But like the name suggests, this will work well if you're shooting a landscape with a lot of colors that are kind of hidden in the landscape itself. Switching the profile to Adobe Landscape, you can bring those out again. Now if we try out another one, let's say Adobe Portrait, that looks good. I really like the way this looks. And the reason for that being is that the skin tones are now smoothed out. They're not as punchy, not as orange anymore. They, they still have that slightly warm tone because of the edit, but the profile smooths out so much that it just looks nice. This looks good, it looks healthy. 
I like this as an image. Like I could straight up toss this onto the ground. Good to go. All right, and last but not least, tip number four is that you should be toggling your modules. Now, let's say you have an image. We're using this portrait of Daniel again. We apply our preset and you just don't like it. Let's run through the tips, right? White balance set to auto looks pretty good, but I'm not a fan of the skin tone right here. We switch our profile over to portrait. That already looks a lot better, but we're not quite there yet. The exposure looks good. I don't want to change that necessarily, but I'm still bothered by how dark the skin is. If we toggle back and forth, that just doesn't look healthy at all. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to head into these modules and instead of opening them up and tweaking them straight away, first I want to see which one actually creates this look with the skin. So we're going to be talking them on and off one by one. Now if we go to the tone curve, that determines so much of the image, I don't necessarily want to mess with that straight away. So I'm just going to leave that as is. If we toggle the HSL tab, you can see that that has a dramatic impact on the skin tone. So I'm going to keep that one in mind. Split toning doesn't seem to be doing that much to the skin itself, mainly to the background. Detail doesn't transform the color at all. Same goes for lens corrections, transform, effects, all the same. And calibrations, but has a slight effect. You could leave this as is, but I'm, I'm thinking let's go back to the HSL tab. So if I know that the HSL tab is what's creating this look on the skin, now it's up to me to determine what I can do to fix that. What I'm seeing right now is that his skin is just too saturated right now. So let's start off by bringing the saturation back down just a little bit. That looks a lot better. Now it's a little bit too dark for my taste. So if you go to the luminance and inject a bit of exposure into this color channel, in this case orange, let's do that. That looks pretty good. It's got the edgy look. The sky looks nice and teal, so you still have that teal and orange tone, but the skin tone looks so much better than what it did if we would just apply this preset. Now, the entire reason I made this video in the first place is because as of today, my own presets are available for purchasing on my website. I've been using them in this video, and if you'd like to have them for yourself, you can buy them by clicking the link in the description below. If you do decide to pick it up and support me, thank you so much. It truly means the world to me. You're helping me survive here in Canada. We all know it can get pretty rough out here. So thank you so much. And thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions, drop a comment, send me a DM on Instagram or Twitter at Aaron Bagel. And until then, I will see you next week. Peace.